Hi everybody and welcome to Photo Mike's Garage. Today I'd like to say a few things about my Porsche 911. So as you may or may not know, I am going to sell my Porsche 911. And it's been a lot of fun having this car. I've had it for about a year and a half. I've done some work on the car. I've driven it to Cars and Coffee, uh, to different Porsche, Porsche shows, and I've had a lot of fun. This car is great. It's also kind of strange. For anyone who's never actually uh, had a air-cooled old 911, well, let me tell you, they're, they're pretty strange cars. First of all, let's uh, open her up and I'll show you a few things. Let's uh, open up the hood. So the latch is right, oh, it's right there. Poor symbol, yes. You insert just to the left of the poor symbol, push to the right, and up she goes. Oh, and hey, where's the engine? There's no engine in here. Okay, so the first strange thing is that the engine is not in the front, it's in the, the back. It's in the back here. The front is what we call the frunk. The front trunk, the frunk. And it's actually fairly large size for such a small car. The uh, battery is right here. Spare tire right there. Got some tools in here as well. Got a few items here. So it's quite a large area for a small car. This actually is better. There's more room in this little Porsche than there is in a Lamborghini Huracan. So don't buy one of those, buy my Porsche. And over here is a fuse box inside the frunk. Let's take a look at that. Look at these old time fuses. Even for 1979, this looks like something from the 50s. The way they have their fuses here, right? Look at that. Very old time stuff. Uh, but that makes it charming actually. And of course, the uh, master cylinder for the brakes is right here and right underneath here. Another thing kind of nice right here you can see is that you got these big round bulbous fenders, which you know, you just, you just want to hug them. They're nice. One more thing about 911s is that the front wheels are almost always smaller than the rear wheels. And I'll talk about why that is next, or right, well soon. Okay, let's move to the interior here. So, of course, Porsches are well known for having a very well laid out instrument panel where you can easily read very large instruments. In this particular Porsche, we have a red line at around 6,200 RPMs and only 167,000 kilometers on the clock, kilometers because this car has always been in Canada. But here's something strange. Can you see that? That says, Druk Press. What is that? I don't know. Druk Press. And uh, what is this? O-E-L. O-E-L. Okay, so that's the German words for uh, oil, oil level. There's your gas uh, level, temperature, and this one, Druck Press, is oil pressure, which is pretty cool to have that in a car because most cars don't come with oil pressure gauges, especially from this era. This car came with all the information you need. Oil pressure is a very important thing to know at all times. The rest of the uh, the package though is kind of a mess and everybody knows it. The air conditioning is uh, very cryptic. No one can tell how to make these things work and how to get heat. Uh, you open up these two levers, sort of like uh, throttle levers on a small airplane. You open these up and this opens the valves up to let hot air uh, into your passenger compartment. 
because remember the hot air has got to come from behind so that's part of the uh, the heater control system this is part of the heater control system this is the air conditioning uh, knobs right and then this is your standard vent uh, I still don't know how this all works so it's pretty confusing but most of the time I drive it in the summertime so it doesn't really matter uh, just ignore this stereo I know it looks horrible so then you have a rear defogger you had the fog lamps and of course back in 79 everyone smoked so there is your cigarette lighter and a fairly large glove compartment and the visibility is fantastic just fantastic just a second I'll close the front And the visibility out the front of this car is fantastic because it has very small little A pillars, which the, the new cars never uh, can never get away with that. And it's the windshield's quite close to you uh, compared to most modern cars, which have a very sloping windshield and a very large dash. This one has a short dash, sort of like a Volkswagen Bug a little bit. And look at that view. You get those two fenders sticking up in your eyesight as you drive which lets you know that you're driving something different that's for sure and very uh something that is easily and instantly recognizable by any car enthusiast the uh, front passenger area is actually quite large for such a small car it's a little bit narrow so if you have two big guys in here you might be touching shoulders but uh, it's actually got quite a bit of room Uh, rear passengers pretty minimal but at least you can carry them so this is a four seat car okay so you're at a gas station and you're looking for where's where's the gas cap to put the gas in the car it's not anywhere here and then you realize what is this this is the gas cap this is where you put the gas at the front of the car not the back of the car because the gas tank is actually in the front so you pull this little knob here that opens up they've got a little flap in here to protect your paint which is very nice of the Germans to think about such things and there is your gas cap there we go And this little filler is for the windshield washer. If you get a Porsche, make sure you get membership with the Porsche Club of America. And then you get this cool little sticker you can put on your windshield. Okay, you may have noticed that, like I said, we have a good view out here, but we have the windshield wipers sort of in our way on this side, but there's no windshield wipers over here. Why did the Germans make it so that they're all stacked over here and not over there, out of your view? Doesn't sound like the Germans would do something that would be so inefficient, does it? But there's a reason. The reason is that if you're racing, and remember, Porsche built this car with the idea of going racing from the, from the get-go, you want the first stroke, stroke of the windshield wipers to clear your windshield if you're racing. So as soon as you activate it, the first stroke clears your windshield instead of having to wait for it to come over and then finish. It's just much more efficient if, if you're doing something as important as racing. Uh, talking about racing, uh, let's start the car. Oh, no, see, there is no key over here. How do you start the car? this is where the key goes right here this is where the key goes right here that's how you start the car on the left side with your left hand why would they do that most people are right-handed well the reason why is because especially with a Le Mans start where a driver would run across the racetrack hop into his car start and get going as fast as possible the fastest way to do that is to put the key in on the left side that saves maybe half a second but seconds count when you're racing. 
In this car, we have a nice five-speed transmission, very nice for 1979. This car is actually cruises pretty good on the highway. Um, the revs don't go too high. So yeah, it's, uh, it's actually more comfortable on the highway than my, uh, my Camaro. Oh, and how about this? Vent windows. You gotta love, you gotta love vent windows, right? We don't have those anymore. Okay, once you get into your car, once you get into your 911, uh, in this particular car, all the door locks lock automatically for you for security, uh, like some modern cars. And then when you want to get out, the door won't open. How do you get out? How do you unlock the car? Well, here it is. You unlock by turning this knob. Instead of a, a lever or a handle, it's a knob that you turn to the left to unlock the car. Okay. Now listen to that, that's the sound of a Porsche door closing. Very unique sound. Okay, remember where I said that the front tires, and I mean the front wheels and tires are smaller in uh, width than the rear tires. In this particular case, I've got turbo flares, steel turbo flares on this car, which allows having very wide rear tires. But even the standard 911s had wider rear tires. Why is that? Why is that? Well, I'm going to show you. Okay, so obviously this is where the engine's going to be, somewhere in there. So to open this up, usually the, the handle to open up the hood for the engine is right here. But of course, we don't have an engine in the front. We have an engine in the back, and the handle is right here. It took me at least half an hour to find that the first time I looked at a 911. Okay, by the way, this spoiler here in the back with all this grill, this is called the whale tail. And this came on the turbo cars from the late 70s and the 80s. And of course, my car is not a turbo, but I do have the turbo tail, which definitely um, stands out, you might say. So let's open up this. Okay, now that we've got the uh, engine compartment opened up, you can see the famous flat six of the 911. It's called flat because the cylinders are all on a plane, all on a horizontal plane. The crank's in the middle, the cylinders are going like this, this on each side. This is very iconic. This is the fan uh, and there's a fan shroud. So basically, this fan blows air over the cylinders to help cool them. That's why this car is called air-cooled. But in fact, it's air-cooled and oil-cooled. Uh, this car uses a large amount of oil as a way to keep the engine cool. The uh, oil, as it circulates through the engine, absorbs the heat from the cylinders and it is then dissipated through a oil cooler. Most cars from this era would have maybe would use maybe, uh, what do you say, about a, a gallon of oil, about uh, say four to five quarts of oil, while this car uses 12 liters of oil. Oil tank is right here. This is where you put the oil, and it uses a lot of oil. So when you do an oil change on a 911, you're gonna go through a lot of oil. But that oil is part of the cooling system. So technically this is an air and oil cooled motor. But it does not have a water radiator, so you don't have to worry about radiator fluid, radiators and stuff like that. It does have a oil cooler, which is like a radiator, uh, which is at the front of the car. This huge chunk of metal is the air conditioning system. Uh, back in the 70s, the air conditioning was huge and heavy, and this is definitely huge and heavy. Uh, this is not really working. Most old air-conditioned uh, Porsches, air conditioning doesn't really work. And there's the oil filter right here, quite large. And there she is. Now, it doesn't look like it'd be easy to work on this car, but 
In fact, after you remove some, a few hoses and stuff like here, it can be done, but it's definitely a little easier if you have a lift, because a lot of the work has to be done underneath. So you can see how wide this car is. And if we take a look underneath, you've got really wide rear tires here on this car. So those wide tires, because you have the engine in the back, you have all the weight in the back. So when you go around the corner, the back end tends to want to uh, get out of line first, tires to go into oversteer. And that can be very dangerous and hard to control. Most cars with the engine in the front go into understeer, where the front end sort of wants to drift wide in the curve. In this car, the rear starts to drift wide, and that can be disastrous. So they put wider tires in the back to give you more traction in the back to help prevent the oversteer and to make the car handle more neutral. In most driving conditions, this car is completely safe and uh, I've never had any trouble with it. Oh, and one more thing, when you do check the oil level, you don't check it like you would a normal car. With the engine off, you just pull the dipstick up and take a look at the level. No, on this one, you have to have the car running, it has to be warmed up, and then you check the dipstick as the car is running. Okay. And this, of course, is where you check the oil level, at the OEL, the OEL level. And you want to make sure that that is about at least halfway up the scale, and then you're fine. Oh yes, one more quirky thing about an old 911 that people in modern cars are not used to, manual steering, no power steering. Now this is a pretty small car, so it's still fairly easy to maneuver, but yes, at some points that you do have to have a little bit of muscle to turn the steering wheel. No power steering. Okay, so that's just a few of the quirks about a 911. There's more than that. That's all I could think of at this time. I'm going to be selling this car soon. I'm going to really miss this car. Um, my first 911, my first air-cooled 911. Uh, I hope I'll have another one someday. But for now, this car has to go and a new car has to arrive. So, bye bye 911, bye bye. So thanks for watching Photo Mike's Garage, and I will see you next time.